Good morning to everyone out there in online learning. I am Mr. Angel from the History Museum. This is Hands-On History at Home, which is where we're all at, of course. Uh, thank you so much for coming online. Be sure and tell your friends. I'm here every Thursday morning telling campfire stories about just the wonderful stories and legends about the state that we live in, Colorado. This is my storytelling hat right here because I love that it has the state flag on it. So I'm going to be uh, today talking about Pikes Peak. Now, the reason I chose Pikes Peak as a subject today is because, well, Pikes Peak is there, but people know it's a mountain, but it actually has an astounding history. And there's so many stories and so many legends about it that I thought for a big mountain that we drive by whenever we're going by Colorado Springs, maybe we should know a little bit more about kind of the hidden history of one of the major mountains here in Colorado. Now I can see a lot of you, if you have ever driven by and know where Pikes Peak is, just give me a wave so I know that you know where Pikes Peak is. Okay, now here's a second bigger challenge. Who's ever been to the top of Pikes Peak? Give me one of these. Well, if you've been to the tops of Pikes Peak, that's pretty good. Pikes Peak is one of the 14ers. Colorado has over 50. I think that I've seen the numbers between 53 and 54. I like to say 54, it could be 52, 53, 54. But clearly in the low 50s, number of 14ers. Now behind me, every Thursday morning, I always like to have my backdrop be a picture of what I'm talking about. This is a picture of Pikes Peak. And then the rocks in the front here, that's a Garden of the Gods. And when you're going up the Garden of the Gods, you see these rocks jutting up like this, they're all red and everything. But in the background is the majestic view of Pikes Peak. What's great about Pikes Peak is, stands kind of in isolation. It's the only mountain around it of its size. There are other mountain ranges in Colorado that when you glance up there, it's almost hard to, to find the particular mountain you're looking for. And the reason is there's so many other peaks around it the same size. But Pikes Peak, there's only Pikes Peak. And from Denver on a really clear day, if you're looking south and you see an unobstructed view, you can see Pikes Peak sticking up over there. Now we're going to talk about Pikes Peak today is this. And part of online learning, of course, is to have fun. The other part of it is to learn some new information, but the other part is, especially for the work that we do at the History Museum, have a greater appreciation for how wonderful this state is, Colorado, how many cool things are here. Now, today I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to, like a classroom, we'll, we'll march down the subject area. First, the name, where it came from, why it's called Pikes Peak, then the composition, what that mountain's made of, then we're going to be talking about the gold rush and uh, Pikes Peak or bust. Then we're going to be talking about a beautiful song that was written up there. We're going to be talking about the history of it and then how it's used in the modern time today if we were to go up there. And then I have two wild and crazy legends that I'll wrap up with stories about Pikes Peak. Now, to begin with, this name is called Pikes Peak but it's had a lot of names before that. The people who have lived longest in Colorado are the Ute, the native nation of the Utes. They viewed Pikes Peak as their origin mountain. They were born or created on Pikes Peak. They had a special name for it. The Ute people, the band, they were the Tebowash band, and they called themselves the people of Sun Mountain. And they had a name, Tava. And Tava in the Ute language just means the sun. And so they called Pikes Peak Tava because they were people of the Sun Mountain. And the Ute legend that I'll tell you later on is how they were made on the Sun Mountain. So they, their first name was Tava by the Ute people, the Sun Mountain. Then the Arapaho and Cheyenne Native Americans Indians also showed up and they had a totally different name for it. It's got kind of an interesting sound to it. Hey, Otoyo. So while the Utes called it Tava, the Cheyenne, I mean the Arapaho Indians, they called it Hey, Otoyo. 
and that meant Long Mountain. Then the Spanish showed up. So the first people here, of course, were Native Americans, and the Spanish show up. They called it El Capitan, and that means in the Spanish language, the captain or the leader, because they thought because it stood in isolation, it was the leader of all the mountains around it. So, so far we got three names for it. Tava, the sun mountain from the Utes. We got Hey Otoyo from the Arapaho, meaning long mountain. Then we have the Spanish calling it El Capitan, meaning the captain or the leader. So our question is, well, how did it end up the name Pikes Peak? Well, I gotta show you something. If you go there today, part of this thing is I love showing pictures. Now, of course, on Zoom, the picture's always backwards. If you go to the top now, it says the summit Pikes Peak. That footage is wrong. Nowadays, all the geologists say it's 14,115 feet tall. So that number you see right there, that's wrong. So they better correct that because now it's 115 feet, but it's a 14 or over 14,000 feet. So if you go up there, that's what you see first. But the reason it's called Pikes Peak, this fancy dude here. Now look at that outfit of his. He's like dressed up, right? Reason is he was a military soldier. When he came out here, Zebulon Pike, he was a lieutenant. Later he became a brigadier, brigadier general. And uh, he was sent out here during the era of, of uh, Thomas Jefferson. And he was sent out here Oh, around 1906 to around that era, I mean 1806, around that era, and he'd been given a job. His job was to come out here and find the border between what at that, that time was the country of New Spain and Mexico, uh, became Mexico later, but it was New Spain, and the United States. Because the United States had just bought all this land from Louisiana, it was called the Louisiana Purchase. So Zebulon Pike, this guy here, he was sent out basically to explore and map the area. But he made a critical mistake. He and his troop, here's part of this story, the legend, they see this mountain off in the distance, right? And they think, oh, let's climb that mountain. They say, let's go climb that mountain. So they take off for the mountain. Two days later, out of food, starving, no clothes, no shoes, they had to kill some bison to make some boots to get up there. They were even close. They had never seen a mountain far away and they didn't realize like we know when you see a mountain far away, it could take you a long time to get there. In fact, here's what he wrote about when he was up there. He wrote this, here we found the snow middle deep, meaning up to his waist, no sign of beast or bird. The thermostat stood at nine degrees above zero. Then it fell to four degrees below zero. He called it Grand Peak. He said the summit of Grand Peak was covered with snow. And then he talks about this on and on. The end of it says the bad prospect of killing us. It determined us to return. So they gave up. Zebulon Pike never made it to the top of Pike's Peak. The reason is they were dying and starving. It was too hard. It was November. The snow had come in. The geography of Pike's Peak, Pike's Peak it's called a polar, polar climate. And that means any time of the, any day of the year, it can snow on Pike's Peak. That's what it means when a mountain has a polar climate. So people get up to Pike's Peak Zebulon Pike, he never made it up there. So that's the story of Zebulon Pike. He came out here to explore. Then it wasn't until 1890, long time after him, that the United States Board of Geographic Names finally decided, well, it had a lot of names. Teva from the Utes, Hey Otoyo from the Arapaho, El Capitan from the highest peak. Zebulon Pike, he described as Grand Peak. He had a totally different name for it in order to honor that he came out here exploring it, even though he never made it up there, never made it. They said, we're gonna name it Pikes Peak after him. So that's how it got the name Pikes Peak. Now, it's not a volcano. 
Some people think that's a volcano that opened up and blew up and made a peak. No. People don't know how long they like. They use big numbers, millions and millions of years ago, a billion years ago, right? What happened was deep under the earth was magma. It's melted rock and it, and it boils up, it boils up, it boils up, and it breaks through the crust of the earth. And when it breaks through the crust of the earth, there's all this mountain lava, underground lava, magma, magma it's called, up above the earth. It didn't explode. That's why it's not a volcano. It was pushed up by geological forces. Then over time, a lot of that ground around it was torn away by weathering. And what was left was granite. Granite is the essential rock of the Rocky Mountains. It actually is, uh, has a very fancy name. It's called pink granite. So it's named Zavalon Pike. Pike speak after an explorer. It's not a volcano. It's granite that was pushed up by geological forces millions and millions and millions of years ago. And now all that's left is pink granite. What's the rock of this? Now, the big thing that it's famous for, however, is this. Pike's Peak or bust. Look at that wagon. Look at that guy there, right? 1860. In 1858, gold was discovered here in Denver. One year later, 100,000 miners have come out here. Now, the reason they said we're coming out to Pike's Peak is when you're coming across the Great Plains of the United States, coming out to Colorado, hoping to find gold. Remember Pike's Peak, I told you, kind of stands by itself. So you see off in the distance, it's just Pike's Peak. So it was the Pike's Peak area. A lot, not a lot of gold was actually found at Pike's Peak. So people would come out in these wagons, Pike's Peak or bust, or they'd have another wagon. Here's another one, says the same thing. Pike's Peak or bust. Now, of course, we know what they're doing. They're coming out for this. To look for gold, right? Coming out to Pike's Peak or bust. Then they made these shanty towns like this. Let me see if I got this right side up. <laughs> and these are just old mining towns around the area. Now, so they come out here looking for gold all of a sudden. Pike's Peak or bust. Now, when they came out, kind of crazy when they came out. Here's a newspaper report from that era. Pike's Peak is in everybody's mouth and thoughts. Pike's Peak figures in a million dreams. There's Pike Peak's hats, Pike Peak's guns, Pike's Peak's boots, Pike Peak's shovels, and all designed expressly for the use of miners. So the whole idea of Pike's Peak, all this mining industry blew up. Of course, a lot of gold wasn't found about Pike's Peak. So that's the history of Pike's Peak, where it got its name, what it's made of, Pike's Peak or bust, the gold miners coming out. Here's something else about these people that came out. I want to show you a family. This is a family, the Spain family. There's the man, there's the mom, and there's the two kids, right? And then they come out here, and what they're hoping to do is become miners. But they had a rough go of it. Most of the people that came back, they had a nickname. They were called Go Backers because they didn't find gold. And the very next year, they had to go back wherever they came from. So Mr. Spann wrote a note back to his family. The dishes are put away. We quit work at four o'clock. We stripped off our dirty shirts. We went down a little brook that runs hard. We washed ourselves from head to foot. And we went to bed feeling 50% better. And then we're up at five o'clock in the morning to eat breakfast. That was a hard life for these people. Most of them became get backers. They had to go back. Now. How do you get up to Pikes Peak? In the olden days, you got up there like this. You climbed up there with your burrow in the deep snow. That was tough. Then they decided we're going to build a railroad up there. But notice there's a locomotive pushing that little cart up there to take people up there. Now, that's not what they do nowadays. Nowadays, well, here's another picture of how they would take you up there in a the locomotive like that. But nowadays, you go up in this. This is called a cog railroad. All the little railroads that take people up to Pikes Peak, they actually come from Switzerland, because Switzerland has more 
cog railroads in any country, and they're the experts. Here's what a cog railroad is. Cog railroad, it's not a regular railroad. See this big gear? In the middle of the car is this big gear that connects to a track, and it's called a cog. And that actually pulls that car up a very steep incline. Now, the other way to get up there nowadays is on a road. Look, look at this curvy road. It's a 12.6 mile road. There's 156 turns going up to Pikes Peak. Here's what people do up there nowadays. They drive up there crazy in a race car. They do a crazy turn in a race car. Look at that car about to go off the, the road there. They go up there motorcycle racing. They go up there running. They have a Pikes Peak Marathon that goes up there. They go up there and do crazy yoga at the top in the winter time. They go up there every New Year's Eve, this club, they hike up there and at New Year's Eve they set out fireworks at the peak of Pikes Peak. And the real reason people go up there is to chill out and look how beautiful it is. One of the best stories of Pikes Peak is, I gotta pull it up here, Catherine Lee Bates. She goes up there and, uh, in 1893 and she looks out from Pikes Peak and she's so moved by how beautiful it is. Okay, that's enough of that. But she goes up there and she sees such beauty. She's moved, she's inspired to write a poem. And she writes the words that later became the song, America the Beautiful, which a lot of people think should be the national anthem. So I was going to tell you a couple of legends to wrap up here. Remember the Utes? They felt they were born on Pikes Peak. They called it Tava, the Sun Mountain, because there are people the Sun Mountain. Here's their creation legend. Their creation legend says the Great Spirit created the world. And then the Great Spirit made this hole in the world. And through that hole, he threw down the trees, the animals, the flowers, but he threw down mountains also. And he made this one great big mountain. And then one of the daughters of the Utes was on the mountain and ran into a bear. And the bear, well, a great warrior had to come and save the daughter. And from that day on, the great spirit has punished the bear for what he tried to do by capturing the, the uh, Indian maiden. And that's why, according to the Ute legends, the bear is punished and has to walk on all fours for the rest of eternity. Because at the beginning, the bear walked on two feet like people do. And that is the creation of the Ute people in the great spirit making what they call Tava, the Sun Mountain, so they could be people of Sun Mountain. That's one legend. The second legend is even more interesting. It's a legend about Zebulon Pike. So, let me find that crazy picture of him again. So the legend of Zebulon Pike says this. It's the legend of the, I love the name of it, the lost city of Palinor. So if you want to know the legend of the lost city of Palinor. Now Palinor was supposedly, he wrote about it in one of his journals, but the missing part, so people had to make up what the missing part was, and people have made up the legend of Palinor. Now Palinor was an amulet, and an amulet's like a magic stone, and it was given to Zebulon Pike by a native chief because chief because Zebulon Pike had rescued the daughter of the native chief. So then what happens is the pre-Columbian settlers in this area had created a mythical city called Palinor. The legend says 
Zebulon Pike found it, the legendary city of Palinor, and he buried the amulet there. And it's never been found. And miners and explorers for over a century now have tried to find the amulet in the lost city of Palinor. So that's one of the great legends about Zebulon Pike and Pike's Peak. My name is Mr. Angel. This is the wrap up I tried to tell you. Now when you see Pike's Peak or you drive by, you see that wonderful mountain, I want you to remember it's had a lot of names. It's not a volcano, it's pink granite. Catherine Lee Bates wrote the words to America the Beautiful on top of it. It's been called Taba Ochiyoto. It's been called El Capitan. It's been called Great Mountain, but his name is Pikes Peak. And you can go up there if you want to by car, by motorcycle, by walking, by running. And up there, you'll see the most beautiful sights. At the top, I've been up there. You can actually see the curvature of the earth when you look on the eastern plains. There's two 14ers you can get to by driving. One of them is Mount Evans. The other one is Pikes Peak. You actually don't have to climb that 14er. You can drive up there. All right, that's some info about Pikes Peak. I welcome you back next week. Call your friends, tell them to tune in on Thursday morning for Campfire Stories with Mr. Angel. Next week, I'm gonna blow your mind with stories about the mountain man. I'm even gonna show you a flintlock rifle and show you how it works. All right, do we have some questions? We do, Mr. Angel, thanks so much. We have a couple of questions. Um, the first one is Pikes Peak Hollow. Oh, no way. <laughs> I'm laughing, that question is cracking me up. <laughs> Just the idea that that would be a hollow mountain, that'd be a wonderful legend or myth that it's hollow and inside is Pike Speaks amulet or something. No, it's not hollow. It's solid granite rock. That's what it is. Okay, awesome. And then our second question, I think this one was from, I think they might be gone now, um, Allison, but the question was, what do they mean by Pike's Peak or bust? What is the or oh, bust part? You know what? Let me get that picture again real quickly. Pike's Peak or bust. Okay, the idea of Pike's Peak or bust is this. They had two goals. One, you're either gonna to get to Pike's Peak and you're gonna find gold, and you're gonna make your fortune, or you're gonna fail. And if you fail, that means you're just busted out and you're gonna be called what's a go backer. You gotta go back to home where you came from, busted out. So that's what it meant, Pike Peaks or bust. You're gonna be rich, you're going to be broke and your dream is busted. So that's what that meant. Great. Um, I have a question about how many times you've been to the top of Pikes Peak. Once. Let me tell you why. I'm a big outdoors person. Last year, I actually walked the whole Colorado Trail. I walked from Denver to Durango. I've climbed 14ers. And then so it's hard to climb to the top of a 14er. It's like exhausting. But when you get up there, it's so magnificent. But I was lazy. I got to tell you truthfully, I was lazy. There's, remember I told you there's two 14ers you don't have to climb to get to the top. Mount Evans is one you can drive up there. Pikes Peak is the other one. So instead of climbing 14ers or climbing through the mountains like I've done before, I drove up to Mount Evans one day, looked around, loved it. And then one day I decided, you know what? I'm gonna go down and drive up to the top of Pikes Peak. And that way I've been to two more 14ers, but I didn't climb them, I drove up there. I've only been up there once. The 156 turns going up, it was exhausting driving it. It was worse coming down than going up, because going up, you're just driving. Coming down, you're hitting the brakes all the time. Uh, I didn't like coming down <laughs> in a car because the 156 turns and it's one of those places where you look over the side and you can see down a thousand feet, made me really anxious. So, uh, but driving up there and coming down, people do it all the time in the summertime. Okay, awesome. I have not personally been up to Pikes Peak at all. <laughs> I recommend it. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Either that or Mount Evans, one or the other. I recommend it, drive up there. Cool. Um, I have a question. I think this one came from Caitlin. So did Zebulon, get his journal back. 
from when he was imprisoned by the Spanish? Oh, that's a good question, because Zebulon Pike, he ended up in trouble. <laughs> and these short things, I can't tell you the whole story of everybody. So Zebulon Pike, he comes out here, and uh, he's, on a, he's on a mission, right? He's supposed to explore and map and everything. And then uh, he gets captured by the Spanish. And then he's actually more or less thrown in jail. What happens is this. He, uh, he's treated really royally down there. He get, he, all his men were thrown in jail, but he was treated almost like a dignitary by the Spanish people, the Spanish leaders of the place where he was. He got good food. He got, got to visit with the dignitaries. He's treated quite well. Then he was released and then ended up being a brigadier general and he ended up dying in battle. He, ended, he was killed in battle. It wasn't a good thing. His, his final end, he was a soldier ended up being killed in battle. Uh, and then what happened is, the question about his journals, the reason these journals exist is after he was released, he kept writing about his explorations here. It wasn't a question of whether he got his journals back because they confiscated his journals and everything. He kept writing and filling in his journals and that's why we have record of his journals today. A lot of people back then, you gotta figure this, they didn't have the internet, they didn't have Facebook, they didn't have Snapchat, they didn't have Instagram, they didn't have anything we, Zoom, they didn't have anything we used to communicate. They were seriously old school. They kept journals and they kept diaries. It was interesting to read them if you ever get a chance to do some of your own <laughs> research about it. Thank you for that question. Cool. That brings us to just about time. I want to respect everyone's time today because I know we all have a lot of other things we're going to be doing on this fabulous Thursday indoors. Did want to thank Mr. Angel again for coming on and talking about Pike's Peak.